Welcome back. Today I show you how to count in C++. This is just another thing that you can do with C++. You've already seen how the counting function works uh, when I showed you both the for and the while, fun while loops in C++ as well as in a few other tutorials. But today I explained to you how it works a bit more in detail by counting the passing and failing grades in a classroom as an example. On your screen you see the basics that I start off with. Once again the program, programmer purpose, include IOSG using namespace standard. Those should be standard right now. And the first thing we have to do is declare a few variables, four to be exact. And since we'll only be working with whole numbers for now, we'll keep things integer. We'll declare pass, fail, grade, and i. The i is for the loop we will actually be looping. I'll use the while loop all over again to show you that it, it does work and that it's necessary for counting. The next thing you have to do is tell the program the uh, default values of pass and fail. Pass equals to zero. Fail equals to zero. This tells the program that pass, the default value of pass and fail is zero. Since we're going to be looping, I have to declare the value of i as well. I'm going to declare this one. You can declare 0, 5, it really doesn't matter. Now we start the while loop. We do while i is less than or equal to 10. We're telling the program to run until i reaches 10. That means it'll run 10 times. We'll, we'll enter 10 grades and, it, and the program will count for us. Let's do inside the loop we have to prompt the user to input the grades. So we'll do C out please enter the grade. We have that, we have to use the C in as well. We'll do C in grade. We're telling the program that the user just inputted the grade for whatever the value may be. Now the if function comes into play. I've already shown you how to do this in the past. If you want a full explanation of how it actually works, you can check out the other video as well. I've, this. The if function is one of my first videos for easy programming, and I'll explain it here in detail as well. So we'll do if grade is greater than or equal to 65, pass plus plus, else fail plus plus. Okay, T to break it down, we're saying that if the grade entered is equal to or greater than 65, then the value of pass, which is here, it'll go up by 1. If you put pass minus minus, it'll go down by one, so the count will go to negative. It's still counting, and it'll still work, but we're going to keep it positive. Alternatively, alternatively, you can do pass equals to pass plus one. It'll give you the same result. The else fail plus plus means if it's any other number other than greater than or equal to 65, meaning if it's lower than 65, then the count of fail will go up by one. That's pretty simple. But we're not done yet. We have to tell the program to increase the value of i as well. Excuse me. I'll scroll it up here. Let's do i plus plus. One thing you can do i equals to i plus one. It'll have the same effect. But we're saying that every time the while loop runs, the value of i will increase by one. And it'll go up until it reaches 10, and then it'll stop and display the value. Once we have that, we'll display the last output. We'll do C out. There are pass passes and fail. We can go on to the next line as long as they don't end it. Failures in the class. Yendl. Remember your system pause. Otherwise, the program will shut off immediately. Okay, this is telling. This will display whatever the count of pass is. Maximum value for each value, either pass or fail, will be ten because the program is running ten times and it's counting up by one every time. Let's run it as a test debug. It says please enter grade. We'll enter a few random numbers. We'll do 100, 65, 55, 39, 29, 91, 88, 74, 90, 
and 10. The 10 is the 10th number. We should have 6 failing and 4 passing. Press enter. There. There are 6 passes and 4 failures in the class. And if you count it, that's actually correct. Press enter. It'll close. As you can see, this is counting in C++. I hope you've learned a little more about how counting works in C++ as well as get a little bit more experience in both the while function and the if functions in C++. Uh, once again, you could have done the same thing with using the for loop in C++. It'll give you the same effect. It's just a little different in syntax. Uh, if you have any questions or want a copy of this program, let me know. I'll send it to you right away. And thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe.